factors are the numbers that go into a number. The simplest way of finding factors is by starting off asking yourself what times table the number is in. We can then make sure we do not miss any out by being a bit systematic. To find the factors of 12, we always start with 1 times 12, so 1 and 12 are both factors. Next we see whether 2 goes into 12, 2 times 6 is 12. Next we move on to 3, 3 times 4 is 12, so 3 and 4 are factors. We do not continue since the next would be 4 times 3, and we already know that both of these are factors. So the factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12. Multiples describe the times table of a number. So the first four multiples of 8 are 8, 16, 24 and 32. Unlike factors, every number has an infinite amount of multiples because you can always add the number on to find more. When looking at factors, we found out that every number has a factor of 1 and itself. What makes prime numbers special is that these are the only factors they have. 7 is a prime number because it is only in the 1 times table and the 7 times table. 9 looks like it might be a prime number, but you can find it in the 3 times table, so 9 is not a prime number. Confusion often ensues when discussing the first prime number. Many students have made compelling arguments that 1 should be classified as a prime number. Unfortunately, modern mathematics would break apart if 1 was in the prime club, so the smallest prime number is 2. 2 is also the only even prime number, since all other even numbers have 2 as a factor. We know primes and we know factors, so why not smash them together to make prime factors? All numbers can be written as a product of their prime factors. To find the prime factors of a number, there are a number of different methods, but each are effectively doing the same thing. I like the bubble approach, but if you like straight lines, there are better methods out there for you. To write 40 as a product of prime factors, start by putting 40 in a circle. Every time we have a number in a circle, we're looking to split it up into two numbers that multiply together to make that number. I would advise you starting out with 2 to see whether that works first, then 3, then 5. We can split 40 into 2 and 20, because 2 times 20 is 40, so we show these in circles below. 2 is a prime number, so we can just leave that, but 20 is not, so we need to focus on this next. 20 is 2 times 10, so again, we include the circles below. 10 can be split into 2 and 5, because 2 times 5 is 10. Adding these circles, we notice that both 2 and 5 are prime numbers. When this happens, we can stop. The prime numbers we found were 2, 2, 2 and 5, written as a product. Product means multiply. The answer would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. Often you'll be asked to write it this in index form. This would give us 2 cubed times 5. Highest common factors, or HCF for short, are exactly what you would expect them to be. They are the largest factors that two numbers share. The common factors of 16 and 24 are 1, 2, 4 and 8, so the highest common factor is 8. Lowest common multiples, or LCM, are the smallest multiples two numbers share. The lowest common multiple of 6 and 9 is 18, since if you write out both times tables, this is the number you will find both have in common first. You can always multiply this number by 2, 3, 4, etc. to find other common multiples. A skill you'll need to practice involves spotting when you'll need to use HCF and LCM within a question. We have two buses, bus A leaves every 12 minutes and bus B leaves every 16 minutes. If both buses start at 9 o'clock, when will they both leave at the same time again? At 9.12, bus A will leave again, but bus B will leave four minutes later. Seems like it's going to be tricky to find out when they both will leave next. Not so much, actually, since this is secretly an LCM question. The lowest common multiple of 12 and 16 is 48, so every 48 minutes they will leave at the same time. This will next happen at 9.48. Using the skills you've gained so far, finding the lowest common multiple and highest common factor is pretty simple, but does take a while, especially as the numbers get bigger. As mathematicians, we are always trying to find quicker methods. We can actually find the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor using a Venn diagram. The nice thing about this method is it can be very quick for large numbers. Let's find the highest common factor and lowest common multiple of 50 and 70. First, we need to write both of these as product of prime factors. So 50 is 2 times 5 times 5, 70 is 2 times 5 times 7. Next, we need to draw a Venn diagram with these prime factors. We can see they both have a 2 and a 5, so these will go in the middle. 50 has a leftover 5 and 70 has a leftover 7, so we'll add these to the Venn diagram as well. The highest common factor can be found by multiplying the numbers in the overlap together. 2 times 5 is 10, 
So the highest common factor is 10. The lowest common multiple can be found by multiplying all the numbers in the Venn diagram together. 5 times 2 times 5 times 7, 350. So the lowest common multiple is 350. A student once asked me, why doesn't this just give us the same number as 50 times 70? And it does for some numbers. But don't forget, with the Venn diagram, if they both share a number, we only wrote it once.